Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to the Career Update session. My name is Antonio Sawara Puymedon, and this is Irena Verezovsky. And we're going to talk about Career Updates. So thank you for coming. So how many of you are familiar with Courier? Show of hands. OK. <laughs> yeah. It's the, the project with the platypus. Uh, so what we do is we bring OpenStack services to containers. And the reason why this started was because uh, container networking uh, was not up to where we wanted it to be. And we had a lot of backends to Neutron that were good quality, and Neutron is in production, and so on. So we started out uh, bringing just Neutron to Courier Lib Network, uh, sorry, to uh, Docker Lib Network with a project called Courier Lib Network. And then we started adding things uh, because that's what software projects do. They start with the mission and they start adding things afterwards until they can send emails. Uh, so we added support for Docker Swarm. First, we started with just plain Docker, then Docker Swarm, uh, then uh, Kubernetes. And recently, we also added Cinder and Manila Storage. So uh, to give you a bit of an idea about who is involved, uh, here you can see uh, a nice uh, slide about who is. This is Mondays, like estimated by Stackalytics, so make of that what you will. But uh, as you can see, we have quite a few companies. The one without the logo, the big one without the logo is independent. So I suspect some of the big uh, contributors doesn't have Stackalytics well set up. Uh, but we have uh, core contributors from most of those that have a, a logo. And, and we want to thank all these companies for, for putting effort, and especially to the, to the people that are putting effort every day into the project. So the, the stats are 45 contributors for the last, re last release. This includes sometimes people from Newton making a one-off patch and stuff like that. But, but it's quite a bit of uh, contributors. Uh, I want to remind that if anybody has a question, you can stop me and ask me now. In the end, you can ask. And really, don't be shy to ask about anything. If you think something is inaccurate or something you don't really understand, please go ahead and ask. So for Pike, which is going to be released uh, in not so long time, these are the, the features and, and enhancements that we've been working on and that are already on master and that I'm going to demo tomorrow with, with Irena. Uh, so we made recently the first release is 0.1.0. So if you want to use it in production, you're free to shoot yourself in the foot uh, because it's, it's not 1.0.0 yet. Uh, we added uh, Kubernetes services support, and that is good uh, because without that, like in the previous uh, times, we only had services support in POCs. But now that we have it on master, we can start going after more and more improvements. And what this allows you is if you have a, uh, an application and it, it has several pods, you can just target the cluster IP of the, of the service, and then it will load balance across them. And if you want more information about that, again, there is a deep dive on that tomorrow. Um, then the way we do that allows us to scale up and down the amount of pods that the service has. So it, you can respond to the load uh, needs of your application. So far, we only support Neutron LVAS v2. That's our first, first implementation, but it's uh, Steve Door uh, enabled, so you can implement your own backend if you have different kind of uh, load balancers. And you could just call to them as long as uh, they play nice with, new, with your Neutron uh, backend, you're good to go. Uh, then we also added uh, client and server side SSL, so when the query controller which is the, to, to give a bit of an of a overview, uh, we don't have a slide for that today, but tomorrow for this. But there is the query controller that is watching the Kubernetes API. And then uh, in each of the worker nodes, there is a, a CNI uh, executable. And both of them need to con connect to the Kubernetes API. So the way that they Authenticate there is either with a token, which we don't support yet, or with a client-side certificate, or no authentication whatsoever. So what we added support for and we have merged and we will demo tomorrow is to use the 
the client side key and certificate. Uh, we also got a contribution recently to add Guru Meditation Report, so you can get more information about what's going on on the controller. And we have RDO packaging, so the demo tomorrow is, is using that, because uh, installing from PIP always makes me nervous. Uh, what we have in flight for Pike, some things will probably make it, some things may not make it. So the load balancer service type support is something that is already supported in Kubernetes for OpenStack, but how it works now is, so you have OpenStack VMs uh, in which you have Kubernetes clusters, and what you want is to make those services uh, accessible through one of the neutral load balancers. And there is a cloud provider that does that, but the problem is uh, it doesn't use uh, neutron ports for the pods, so there is double encapsulation most likely or some other problems like that. So the way we do that is just as we set up a load balancer for, um, for the service, load balancer type for us only means take a floating IP, bind it to that VIP, and, and you're done. Nothing more needs to be done. So it's, it's gonna be a really small change that if I was not doing demos all the time uh, for this week, I would have done it in, in a day or two. So token support will also be helpful because uh, it will assist on something that Irene will explain later, which is uh, deployment. It, it is easier for applications to, to just use a token than to um, go to, with open, open SSL, go to the, CI and, uh, to the CA and sign stuff. And finally, resource pools, uh, because one of the, the biggest bottleneck uh, for this integration is that for each port, sorry, for each pod that you create, you need to go to Neutron and get the port, then you need to bind it, then the, def depends on which backend you use of Neutron, it needs to go and ask information about, um, about the port and so on, and that takes quite a long time. Uh, so that, it will help a lot. Tomorrow we will show some graphs about that. Um, so for the other sub-projects, uh, QueryLib Network, we added uh, the Swarm mode support. I, I don't know how many of you are familiar with it. Uh, the, the, between legacy Swarm and, and, and Swarm mode, do people know the difference? Otherwise I can... All right, so Swarm mode basically was started, I think, 1.13, right? And uh, what it has is that it includes the cluster it store itself and it makes some different assumptions, so it broke our plugin, but now that has been solved. And we support it in, in local scope mode, which means that the networks have to be defined on each of the machines, because there is a bug that, um, well, I don't need to go into the details of the bug, but basically with global, uh, it does the things different than, than before, and we need to, to add support for that. But one very cool thing that we had a user try this, this um, this weekend is the, the Docker plugin uh, infrastructure. So before you either did Docker run and you had to run it yourself or uh, you did pip and so on. So now it's nicer than that, you just do Docker plugin install and it already takes the, the container from Docker Hub. It tells you which m volumes or which mount points it will, it will set up and then you just need to place your configuration there. So it's, it's quite handy. And finally, TLS support, uh, so that between Docker, uh, which is with its lib network component, and uh, Kudir lib network, there will be a TLS communication. So that can be useful in, in some cases. And finally, Fushi for the storage part. Uh, for Pyke, we will have both Cinder and Manila support, and there is a talk about that just later. Uh, I'm going to give the details, so if you want more information about that, but now I'll leave you with Irena to give you more information. So I would like to summarize uh, the main areas that the uh, Courier project is tackling during the Pike release. Uh, for uh, scalability, as Tony already mentions, uh, we are adding support for resource pools, which will allow to spawn much faster uh, the Kubernetes pods, instead of uh, doing number of API calls during the pod creation, it will actually go to the pre-created uh, pools of uh, neutron ports, and uh, by skipping doing the vice versa to the neutron API, it will be much faster. In addition, uh, we also realized during our integration that the flow of that currently neutron reference implementation has is not quite efficient, 
and it takes a lot of time how the information uh, propagates uh, from the compute node to the neutron to notify that the port, uh, port is actually in active state. So we try to work with neutron community as well to improve this uh, workflow. But if you have uh, your uh, backend uh, implementation of the neutron, which is not reference implementation, for example, like a Dragonfly or Oven, uh, this uh, problem actually doesn't exist because there is no message bus that uh, is used. The flow is uh, quite uh, different. For a uh, modularity, um, we designed uh, the Kubernetes integration in such a way that it will be, from the day first, uh, very extendable. So we use the Stevedore-based uh, loading of drivers and handlers to uh, manage and create uh, project subnets, uh, security groups, and eventually the ports. And if you have your different schema um, that you want to manage neutron resources, you can just add your driver or handler, and much more of this will be explained in details during the tomorrow session. So uh, you can uh, just put it in your configuration file, and this uh, should be work working. Uh, in the interop area, we uh, put an emphasis to have the feature of parity with the current uh, Kubernetes uh, networking implementation. So uh, the first uh, networking mode that we support is actually the Kubernetes native networking mode, which is a flat network where each uh, pod has IP from the same uh, subnet. They can communicate easily one with the other. Um, we also support the uh, uh, services. Uh, currently, uh, it, which is already merged, is the cluster IP type, which is default in uh, Kubernetes. And uh, we hopefully achieve the load balancer service type, which allows uh, uh, communication to the Kubernetes services from the outside of the cluster. And hopefully, we'll achieve it for, uh, for Pike. Yeah, yeah, we have to, we have to. It's, uh, because otherwise, you, you have to assign the floating IP by hand, and it's a bit of a bother. And with the lib network, as Tony mentioned, we uh, have, and I think it already merged the uh, v plugin v2 support yeah. for, a, for a Docker uh, Swarm uh, new mode. Uh, so we try to keep uh, uh, the pace with the orchestration engines that we integrate to. Um, to have a better solution from the resiliency uh, point of view, we try to close different corner cases that we realized during the integration. So for example, uh, some case that if you deploy a service and in, in the Kubernetes cluster and the service by design supposed to go to the uh, Kubernetes API, currently this is, doesn't work. So we just realize as we go more interesting cases uh, due to quite uh, not trivial integration and different components may come also out of sync. So this is also handled during, during the, this uh, release. Right, and if you find corner cases, please feel free to bring them to, to the IRC or to the mailing list because sometimes there will be some that we have already encountered and that we have a workaround if we don't have already some patch in, under review for them. For, for manageability, uh, we have a different configuration settings uh, for your deployment type, so uh, you as a cluster administrator, you can just choose what drivers and handlers to, to use, uh, and it easily just upon the deployment time. Uh, on the security, as Tony mentioned before, uh, there is a TLA support for the lib network and the SSL support for the client and server communication in the Kubernetes uh, domain. Uh, and uh, just to mention uh, the improvements we did in the user experience area with lib network, uh, the the time that it takes for the uh, container to come up and that you as a user can actually log into your container when it comes to, to be active, was uh, th this time was quite improved uh, because we changed the mechanism how a, a courier uh, filters the ports which are were created and managed by it in Neutron. So we use uh, the tag mechanism just to annotate uh, mm -hmm. relevant Neutron resources uh, um, with the courier tag, and then it can be easily returned, so no need to retrieve the whole list and filter it when it's retrieved from, from the neutron. Uh, our plans for Queen's quite ambitious. 
hopefully we can achieve them all, but if not, uh, there are already plans, uh, plans for the next release, for, for Rocky release. Uh, on the scalability domain, uh, we want to reuse the same infrastructure that is developed for the uh, ports resources pool and do the same stuff for the services. Because right now, uh, we, what we do, we implement Kubernetes services uh, by using Neutron uh, uh, LBUS. So there is a lot of uh, calls uh, to the API to create the pool, the listener, uh, members editions, and we want to uh, improve this by what is possible just to have it pre-created so we can just grab uh, resources from the pool and not do all the API calls which are quite time consuming. Uh, on the interoperability domain, we, we currently have support of the services by uh, having HE proxy uh, service provider for the Elbus V2 API. We want to switch it to Octavia. Uh, it will uh, actually help uh, also to add some uh, additional functionalities that we currently lack and there is uh, already existing support in Kubernetes for the ingress controller. So we plan to have Octavia uh, playing the important role in this integration as well. And additional functionalities that we plan to add is support for uh, Kubernetes network policies. So for those who are not uh, familiar with the Kubernetes network policies, it's uh, actually the mechanism that allows to uh, provide uh, application isolation uh, on top of the Kubernetes cluster. And uh, there is a solution with a uh, Cube proxy uh, in the uh, Kubernetes, in the native Kubernetes implementation. There are different vendor solutions already existing. We plan to do it uh, by using neutron security groups. Uh, for resiliency, uh, we want to make the existing Kubernetes controller um, highly available. So for Queens, uh, the plans are to have it active passive mode. Uh, we'll see what, what can be uh, done in this area. For manageability, uh, we already started to discuss adding some CLI tool which will be facing the uh, cluster administrators. So different settings and defining defaults and viewing the status of the cluster can be done through the CLI because currently there is either Kubernetes or a Docker API and there is Neutron API but there is nothing in, in between. So it will be sort of the aggregation point that uh, will uh, be facing the cluster administrators. Right, it's, it's maybe to give an idea to something that probably you're familiar with, uh, that is, uh, I think, Nova Manage and Keystone Manage to perform some administrative tasks that will be something like that. What we also plan to do is uh, to have our integration components, uh, especially for the Kubernetes, which uh, the Kubernetes controller, and we also have the CNI part. So we want these components to be hosted by Kubernetes and orchestrated by Kubernetes, uh, which does great job by orchestrating services. So yeah. our integration, actually also the service, so why not use the same infrastructure? Um, for security, uh, we plan uh, to, uh, to add uh, support for Keystone Trusts, which uh, will just right. take uh, the user tokens and it will uh, actually delegate them to do the operations, so we don't need to have additional service endpoints for the integration components. Um, and for uh, modularity, what we realized is the infrastructure that we did for a uh, a courier Kubernetes to integrate with Neutron is uh, quite generic in its sense and it can be easily reused for adding uh, Kubernetes Fushi support for the bare metal Kubernetes clusters which right. will add the uh, storage uh, volumes. Um, so with a bit of rework that we plan to achieve uh, in, in the Queen's release, uh, we'll have the same infrastructure that can serve uh, both uh, integration of uh, the Neutron uh, Manila Center with the, with the Fushi. Uh, so a bit uh, of summary of the features and enhancement planned for the Queen's release. Uh, it's Octavia support for Kubernetes services, uh, Kubernetes network policy and ingress uh, controller support uh, for Kubernetes. As uh, I mentioned before, the Kubernetes uh, network policy semantic uh, can be easily uh, mapped to what we 
currently can do with the neutron security groups. So uh, this is a plan. We previously had some POC that already did this, so we'll just right. need to make this happen upstream. Um, and uh, the ingress uh, which uh, will uh, allow to manage the inbound connections to the cluster. For the FUSHI, uh, we, we plan to have the bare metal uh, Kubernetes cluster support for uh, uh, assigning Cinder and Manila volumes to, to containers. Right. And there is a session about that later. <laughs> yes. Uh, for OK, so uh, in case uh, some of the functionality won't make it to Queens, uh, it will right. definitely will be done through the Rocky release. But in addition, we also uh, uh, took uh, plan to take care of uh, different uh, items. For example, for scalability, we want uh, to scale our Kubernetes controller. So uh, hopefully it will be active passive in, uh, in the Queens release. But in Rocky, we want to have multiple uh, instances which will be working in the active active mode. So it won't only solve the high availability issue, but also uh, help with the load uh, distribution uh, of different tasks between uh, between number of controllers. For uh, the interoperability and feature parity, uh, currently there is ongoing discussion of uh, supporting multiple networks and multiple interfaces that happens in the Kubernetes networking special interest group. Uh, the same uh, questions were uh, raised uh, with the courier team uh, as well. So we want to have uh, some convergence with uh, what, is going, what is going to be decided uh, in the Kubernetes, but there is already some uh, work started uh, uh, in Courier. For example, there is some POC work uh, done to integrate the SRIOV with the interfaces into the, with, with help of Courier into Kubernetes. Uh, on the uh, user experience uh, front, we actually want to achieve much easier uh, deployment experience. Uh, so we want to integrate uh, with uh, existing um, quite good tools uh, that uh, can uh, help with deployment, like kubeadm or Helm, and uh, use existing paradigms uh, to deploy uh, integration uh, components, uh, like uh, config maps, and, right. and so on. For security, we just uh, need to keep uh, uh, looking on what is going on in Kubernetes and uh, keep the same uh, policies and enhance as it goes. Uh, and for modularity, we want to make sure that any third party uh, drivers or handlers that uh, maybe maintain somewhere and it's not mandatorily upstream, but can be easily integrated into our existing uh, framework. Uh, and we want also to improve this by adding some sort of profiles that will aggregate the drivers and handlers. So from the uh, cluster administrator perspective, it will be quite easy to set up it through this uh, configuration uh, yeah. tools. Uh, in addition, we want to enhance the CLI tool by adding uh, uh, some reports and statistics, uh, especially from the controller side that can uh, provide information of number of processed events, uh, the state of the pools, uh, so the, the administrator can easily tune the number of controllers and uh, the, the size of the pools and uh, so on. So um, we need your help, either your operator or developer. In case you're an operator, please help us to design not just cool technical solution, but solutions that will address the real uh, problems. So in this area, we will like to hear if uh, what kind of deployment uh, you, you need to support, either at bare metal or containers inside VMs, what is the scale of your cluster, and what kinds of workloads are you planning to run on your co containers cluster. And if you're a developer, there are a lot of, uh, so just here you see number of ideas in the areas that we would definitely need some help, but there are a lot of other stuff. That, uh, yeah, yeah, if somebody done. wants to implement <coughs> network policy and wants to jump straight at it, more than welcome. And uh, <clears throat> if you want to hear more, there is uh, another session today, later, it's uh, 3.40 p.m. 
about Courier and Fushi. Uh, uh, tomorrow, please come to the Courier uh, project onboarding if you want to learn more and have some hands-on experience. Try to run DevStack, for example. So it's tomorrow at 11 a.m. And there is a Courier Kubernetes session tomorrow at uh, 5.50 with a uh, hopefully live demo. That yeah, yeah. we'll have a live demo. We'll tempt the, the demo gods. Uh, <laughs> hopefully better result than this morning in the keynote. And uh, we'll uh, also give a very deep dive, a very deep dive onto like what are the components that we use, like uh, the facilities from Neutron and, and so on. So I, I think that if you want to, to join uh, the development body, it's very interesting to, to go both on the onboarding and the Kubernetes session. And if you're uh, an operator, the Kubernetes session and the Fushi session are probably a place to be. So if you have any questions, uh, please go to the microphone. Otherwise, you can find us after the, after the talk. All right, so thanks a lot for, Thank for coming. And hope to see you in the other sessions. Bye. Thank you.